हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू के एस आर डेटा विजन स्नो फ्लिक ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम माई सेल्फ कृष्णा आई एम हैविंग अ टेन ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस वर्किंग इन बिल्डिंग अ डेटा सोल्यूशंस एंड इम्प्लीमेंटिंग डेटा प्लेटफॉर्म्स एंड माई मेन फोकस इज ऑन डेटा मॉडलिंग डेटा इंजीनियरिंग एंड डेटा एनालिटिक्स आई एम लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू शेयरिंग माई नॉलेज एंड एक्सपीरियंस योर एंड हेल्पिंग यू अलॉन्ग द वे आई एम करेंटली वर्किंग एज ए क्लाउड डेटा प्रैक्टिशनर एंड डेटा इंजीनियरिंग लीड for one of the major technology service or in organizations today we are here to discuss about one of the scenario or most of the developers which are looking for an a solution so i would like to share my experience and probably you know a more details about it how could they implement in their projects okay so welcome all again so moving on to the first slide okay the topic we going to discuss on this demo is snowflake integration with aws s3 storage so how we are going to integrate a snowflake environment with aws s3 buckets that's an another public cloud where we can able to access our data and we can make sure the data is available on a snowflake tables for all the downstream teams the demo objective okay so the demo objective is how to integrate the snowflake cloud data warehouses with aws cloud S3 buckets to access the files on a real time or on a batch process. Okay, so this demo will be covering as a batch process, and further to this demo, we will be continuing with um, a real time how you can able to access and make the data available in your table using an another Snowflake feature called as a Snowpipe. So we will be providing that as in another demo. In today's demo, pre-requested before we starting with this scenario is. one is people should know about file formats snowflake file formats and at least they have a basic concept on what is the stages in a snowflake and at least they should have a basic concept knowledge on a copy into command how can use a copy into command with the different functionalities i'll try to put more information on this copy into command today and they need an at least a trial version of aws account to try this out in their environment or people who are already into a project and who are they working on that and who facing some issues this with this kind of scenarios okay so they can go through this demo and i will be explaining in detail information here and they can able to follow the same thing to implement this kind of scenarios on their environment okay moving on to the next slide so this is the data flow diagram we're going to follow today so as per the objective we're going to have an s3 bucket on the right hand side so we will be having some files on s3 bucket and our requirement is we have to read this file on fly okay and then we have to make sure the data is available in my snowflake environment to support this process so we are going to create an aws roles and policies to make sure the authentication is having properly and only the required authentications are being provided at aws side and we will be creating in a snowflake objects one is in an integration so which integration helps you to communicate aws with snowflake and integrations we will be creating an external staged objects so external stage object will be a, a stage location where you can able to see whatever the files is available on s3 automatically once we build the integration and we attach that integration with an external stage we can automatically able to see whatever the files are available on your s3 buckets and how can you easily access from the stage okay addition to this we will be adding one more file called as a file format and the file formats will be used to read the format of the files okay so let's move on to the demo i will try to put in more details go slowly and try to understand if you have any questions you can post in the comments and i will be happy to help you to put them in more details on the descriptions okay so moving on to this one i will be maintaining this notepad going forward okay so we will be creating an s3 bucket a new bucket for us and we will be creating an in a role for us and we will create a snowflake objects and finally we load the data into this table okay so for example today i have taken one of the data called as in a customer info so for demo purpose we'll try to load the data into this demo customer info okay so moving on to aws account now so this is the window if you have got a trial version or any kind of version you have got it so as soon as you enter into an aws account you will be seeing this window okay so in this window first thing first thing we need to create is s3 buckets 
okay let's create a one s3 bucket so how can you go to the s3 so you can go here what is s3 here s3 is nothing but a simple storage service okay so this is the service providing by aws cloud so you can store any kind of data here okay so let's go to this service okay so in this service we will upload a single file here okay i'm going to create a bucket now i'm going to create a bucket called demo underscore um i'll just put some date today 1203 2022 okay and i'm choosing in a mumbai location here and ownership i'm for now i'm not giving an ownership for everything and leave rest everything stuff like that don't need to select any versioning here leave all the defaults like that and just create a bucket okay the bucket is successfully created for you now so you can see it has been landed on aws region in mumbai and no public access given and created on december 3rd the Mumbai is good so inside go inside this bucket so now i'm inside this bucket buckets and demo 1203 2022 that's the data i have picked it up so once into you are into this bucket try to upload a file so for me i have a sample file i will be uploading that okay moving here okay customer info okay i have a sample file called customer info i have uploaded that and clicking upload yes now it's successfully uploaded here you could say here the file go into this file if you want to see whatever the data is there you can see or you want to know the more details about this one you will get all this information here okay so this is the whole path of your file and if you want to see the data you can click here so it will pop it up in the next window so you can see whatever data is available okay so for now i'm copying this path and i'm saving it here okay this is the bucket i have created and the file i have uploaded okay and the next one is we have to create the role okay let's move on to create a role what is the purpose of the role it's as simple as the role right when someone wants to try to communicate one play one service to another service what will happen you have to give certain permissions and per certain policies mentioning saying that you have to access using only this kind of credentials right so that credentials we are going to create now so in aws that credentials will be created using a roles okay so now i have it directly here the rules will be available in an iam okay so i'm going into an iam window now on the left hand side you will see both roles and policies are up available so for now what i'll do is first we first always you need to create a policies what is policies means policies means what are the set of actions you can able to take on particular service okay let's define what are the actions it can take so i'm going to create a policy okay so for this policy what i'm going to do is i have an i have already predefined policies there i will walk through this policy this we will get it in the internet as well so going back here i'm going to mention my json and keep moving this okay so if you see what this policy is saying so version i'm just mentioning any dates is fine okay so what i'm saying is the actions right this policy whoever is going to access this policy they can able to do only this kind of actions what are these actions put an object like put a file into that s3 bucket or get an object get the file from the s3 bucket get a version any object version if you are maintaining any versions version controlling then you can able to select what of, what version of file you want to access you can able to access okay delete object if you want to delete totally from the object yeah i'm giving this permission as well and delete object version if you are maintaining a different version enabled on that particular bucket and if there are a different set of files are available if you want to remove any kind of older versions you can able to delete it as well okay so now what set of actions we need to do we have defined it on what resource we need to do that's like an s3 is the resource and we have to mention the bucket name okay so going back to my notepad i know where is my bucket now so this is my bucket name i'm just going picking this bucket name going back to this policies 
okay i'm mentioning my bucket name here and i'm mentioning star here that means i'm referring to all the files star wildcard defines that star is nothing but all the files inside that okay here also i'm saying one more action is called list bucket and get bucket location also i'm giving an an access okay i'm mentioning the bucket name okay now everything is perfectly set so have a one more time look so we are giving an an actions and we giving an actions what type of actions they can take it on what resource that's called an s3 okay so i have defined it okay all looks good moving on to next creating the flag okay we will ignore for no tags tags you can create base key value pairs to identify what are the artifacts has been created for your project alone so if you maintain it's a good practice to maintain if not it's an optional you can skip it okay moving on to the review so what we can do here review policy go here check yes we have given an access to s3 good what are your access we have given we have given an access list read and write all good multiple multiple permissions has been provided and prefix string like all files inside that i am accessing all the files in case if you want to access only certain files based on some pattern what it means in case any s3 location or s3 buckets been created for a two three teams okay and every team is try to inject a files into that particular bucket with their own names like in an employee files like in a um, uh, student files or if you say marketing files if something like that if you want to access only employee files you can have that pattern as well okay you can make that pattern like is only employee dot star so that whatever the file starts with an employee name that only will be able to read by another aws account or by another as snowflake account whatever it is so you can able to restrict that as well on a policy level okay for me whatever i have set on a policy level looks good so i'm going to name something for this called demo underscore 1203 2022 okay and i'm going to put some description this policy will be used by a role to give an access snowflake okay sorry snowflake good now i'm creating policy okay so this creates a policy for us and this policy we will be giving okay we will be attaching this policy to a role so always always it's a good practice and it's a mandatory that when you go into your projects so what do you need to do is you should not give an any access directly to any user okay so always you should follow that roles has been created and roles been assigned to any users okay so as i said policy is created now for us so let's move on to the roles okay i'm going to create a roles for us a role so now another aws account so what is another aws account so this is if i'm checking aws service is for own this account this account level aws service accounts now i'm going to give an access to snowflake which is a third party for me right so for as it is a third party i have choose as a aws account so that is a third party access we are going to give so always choose an aws account if you are going outside of your account okay aws account so automatically when you choose it generates a name unique id here okay this generated a unique id for me so now it says that it gives a two options one is require a external id or required mfa a multi factor authentication choose a external id this is in a recommendation pay okay so you can give for now the same name of this account same name of this account later we will change this one okay this account or if you have any other aws account number you can give that aws account number if not for now practice purpose we can give the same account number once the snowflake generates its own credentials we will edit this one okay <laughs> make sure i just copied it from the above location and then i just pasted in external id okay moving on and then i'm creating a role okay so as soon as you are click next stage it it is asking you to select what policy you need to attach to this demo underscore um, uh, to this role right so this is the policy we have created i am selecting this okay i have selected this is the policy needed for my practice so i am going next okay now it is asking me to create some name i am going to use the same name you can use any name 
so for me like just to maintain that consistency i'm using the same name everywhere okay so i'm going to give some description here this role will be used by snowflake account okay so now all good just have a look on that this is the version it has taken allow and this is the account aws account number what we are working on an external id also have given the same number i when i'll once the snowflake generates its own credentials i will edit this one okay for now just check okay this is the trusted entities has been mentioned and policy this is the policy i have checked and this policy having a few actions and what is the resource we are going to use that's a s3 okay all looks good for me create a role okay you see here the role is getting created now role is successfully created for me click on this role once you click on this role you could see what the summary the details of this role right so every whenever you create a role there will be arn number will get generated what is arn number here it's an application resource number okay so whenever you generate it will be creating the arn it says that iam identity access management the account information the account number and role the name of the role you have been given okay so i'm copying this for now we need this role to communicate it to the snowflake so i copied the information now moving on to snowflake now now on a if we go back to this diagram we have placed we have created a s3 bucket and we have placed a one file over there and second thing what we have done we have created our iam roles and policies now everything is set from a aws side okay now moving on to snowflake we have to create an object called as integration and a stage and for stage we need a file format we will try to create that okay moving on to snowflake so i have a sheet here uh, for me for this demo purpose i'll create a dummy database that's called with demo i'll call and i'll create a schema as well schema demo demo or else demo o3 2022 okay so i'm going to generate this too cool so it's got executor for me let's see demo and schema also it is created for me called as a demo 12 o3 2022 okay so now we have a demos and now what we need to do if i go back to this diagram you see here what is saying first we need to create an integration right let's create an integration for us okay so what we need to do is we need to follow certain syntax in snowflake to create this integration okay i will be writing the syntax okay create or replace it's replace is an optional so you can create a replace and storage okay integration and i'm naming for this integration is aws underscore s3 underscore integration okay snowflake under integration and then what we need to do is always in a snowflake the integration whenever you are trying to communicate with an any external factor that is an external cloud areas okay that is only possible when you create an external stage okay the concept of external stage in snowflake okay that you have to create an external stages when you try to communicate with an other public cloud areas okay so this integration will be used for type is equals to external stage okay and next one we have to do is a uh, storage provider right so storage provider what is a storage provider we are using here we are using is the s3 okay i have mentioned s3 and once it is created enabled is equals to true and then let's have a storage storage aws role arn is equals to i'll explain this whatever it is okay and storage allowed locations right so let's understand what this two parameters is okay and this is the syntax you have to create so what is that create or replace storage integration give a name it's a named object okay give any name what you wish to okay and always it should be an external stage okay and provider is equal to s3 as we are using it as an aws s3 is the common word for aws so similar names will be available for the respective other cloud areas as well 
okay enabled is equals to true and storage aws role arn what is this mean is the ro role we have created on aws so the arn we created is this one i'm copying this okay i have mentioned the arn what is this and which location you are going to access right so the ag location you're going to access is you have to mention it in braces okay and then one sec i'll just remove this and what is the location you're going to access so this is the demo right so s3 demo this is the storage location you're going to access right so i'm going to mention the same thing on my snowflake right so now what i am saying here it is create an integration for me okay while you're creating an integration you have to communicate with my aws using this role and i need to access only a bucket called as this particular bucket okay it's not only specific to a single bucket you can create any number of buckets here okay and this is the syntax you have to use to create the integrations okay now i'm executing this let's see it creates an integration for us okay it says that integration spelling is wrong okay let me put in the grtion storage allowed location right so storage allowed loca location sorry yeah, my bad yeah so it should be locations as i said not only single location you can have any number of bucket locations to can be mentioned so it's 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 in locations not location yeah so now it's successfully created for me let's see it is created so integrations So you could see now the integration is created for me cool okay nice so it is created now let's do a description of this particular integration now i have sorry so now i'm executing i'm describing whatever the integration is being created good cool so now if you understand this is where we have to put little cautious here so developers will be confusing what the iam role we already passed okay that what is belongs to it aws and what snowflake got created uh, arn for us right so if you observe here the storage aws iam user arn okay this is being created by a snowflake now okay so while you creating an integration if you refer back to the command okay so refer back to the command details what you have done is you have passed aws role arn okay that means this is the role this is the role is being generated by an aws okay and the, for which the, for which location for this location it has been generated okay this role having only access to this particular bucket right now right so when you educated your integration with this details aws has when aws details has been passed when we given created our integration what snowflake has generated is snowflake has generated its own arn okay with an external id okay what this details will be used is when you trying to communicate back that means when snow snowflake whenever you try to communicate back with this aws okay so it will start giving this details to the aws and check the authentications okay what that means whenever if i i have to give this details to aws and educate in an aws saying that whenever a snowflake try to communicate with you with this user ar and an external id give an authentication access to it to access whatever the files is available in this particular location okay i'm repeating it here again so allowed locations and role arn aws role arn is something we passed we copied it from aws to snowflake now snowflake has generated its own arn okay aws iam user arn and an external id okay let's copy these details and you have to give this details to your aws okay so now you are into roles go to roles trusted relationships that means you are going to give this details whenever you try to authenticate 
the trust policy has been already been set to access this bucket with this whenever some snowflake account try to access with this you know ARN user or an external ID okay edit your trust policy okay so ARN we have copied from the snowflake what it has generated give the details here okay now I have given the ARN and I'm giving the external ID okay external ID also I'm going to change okay I have given my external ID and ARN generated by a snowflake okay now when I, once I update it the trust policy is been set now the integration whatever integration we have created now it can able to authenticate with an AWS with this role okay and for this location now AWS whenever snowflake requests for something it checks that whether the snowflake has been the snowflake account which is accessing is been satisfying whatever the trust policy we changed with these details okay so now we have created our integrations now what I'll do is I'll quickly run a grant okay grant on um, this integration grant usage on integration okay integration what is integration name I have given here AWS S3 to role account admin okay so I'm just giving an access to integration admin so successfully oh, I would I, I have already created with an account admin so this is if you are into a different role you try to give this one if you are always you use an account admin so be cautious whatever the role you are using if you if you are try to access with a different role try to give a grants to that okay so now I have executed a grants okay let's see now we will create now we have integrated the process right so going back to the diagram so now s3 is completed IAM rules are completed integration I have created integration also the details which is generated by an integration I have set that on my IAM rules as well now all set you see the top layer cream layer is all done now to access the files okay so we have to create an external stage okay before we're going to create an external stage to read a, the files what we are going to load let's create a file format okay create or replace file format and format and I will give some name demo underscore format okay and what type of file I have going to give you I am going to read for now is a CSV okay then delimiter uh, sorry it's a field delimiter field underscore delimiter is equals to I'm using pipe um, pipe code and then skip header this is this is not mandatory to give it so if you would like to give you can give I'm I, because my first record there it is in a header so I don't want to load the data into table so I'm just writing header is called skip is called first record I'm skipping here okay so people who are little familiar with SQL so they can able to write directly like this or you can directly go into stages and inside the stages sorry one sec you can directly go into databases go into your particular database and if you want to create a file formats you can create directly from here similarly you can create a stages also from here so okay you see all the external storage so we are going to use the external so give all these details over here okay you can give your details here who are not familiar with sequels and even similarly for a file formats also you can create a file formats here choose whatever the CSV file or whatever the name you want to give it okay but always a good practice if you want to automate something from a backend so always try to know the syntax first time is okay okay and next time onwards try to create any the sequels whenever you try to manually the snowflake itself will convert all your configuration into a SQL okay so I'm creating this file format for now so file format is created for me now so what I'll do is I'll create a stage create or replace replace stage demo underscore uh, what name will give uh, demo underscore AWS underscore stage something like that and then while you're creating a stage you have to take care of a few things right so what do you need to do what I'm saying in this diagram you see 
the external stage what I'm going to create here, I want to integrate with the object, the storage integration I have created. That's the way whenever you try to access this stage, it starts communicating with this object called as a storage integration and storage integration will start authenticate with your AWS and fetch the files, whatever you need it from there. Right? So now while you're creating an, an external object, right, you have to mention, you have to integrate with storage integrations, right? So what I need to do, I'm creating my stage. So while I was, while I'm creating a stage, what I'll do is I will mention which integration it has to communicate. Okay. Storage integration. And then what the name we have given to the storage integration here, AWS S3 integration. So I'm just mentioning this name here. Okay. And then what I need to do, um, storage integration is done and for Automatically, whenever you create any stage, the CSV is a by default will be attached. File format will be by default will be attached to it. In case if you want to overwrite, you can mention file format is equals to whatever the file format you have given. For now, I'm just mentioning this for a good practice purpose. Okay. And then what you need to do is you have to mention a URL. Okay. What is this URL? Right. This URL is the bucket you are going to access. Right, so the bucket you're going to access is this one. So I'm going to mention this bucket. Okay, buckets also mentioned now, and then we will create it. So once again, whenever you're creating an external stage, you have to integrate with some integration, storage integration you have created, and you have to mention the URLs. Okay, so now I'm going to, this file format is not mandatory. If it is a CSV, automatically whenever you create any kind of stages, it could be user stage, file stage, uh, table stage, or an internal name stage, right? It could be anything automatically by default, you will be having a CSV format, okay? In case if you want to overwrite, you can overwrite mentioning like this, okay? I'm sorry. Okay. It says that stage storage integration. Okay, I have to mention single quotes. <laughs> Involved part is storage integration. So something went wrong here. Integration. Okay, again, it's a spelling mistake. Pardon me for this. I believe it's not this. Yeah, cool. So now I have created my stage. Okay. So what is that? If you, if you go back and see here, what we have mentioned is now the objects we are seeing on the screen, right? So S3 we have created and we have pushed a single file here. We have created IAM roles and policies. We have created a storage integration. And now I have created an external stage as well, which is tagged to this integration. Okay. Now, when I was explaining at the first slide, right? So all I need to see is as soon as the integrations, everything is integrated here, I could able to see whatever the file is available here automatically whenever I try to access the stage, right? Let's find out if that is happening here, okay? So the command to see whatever the files are available in that particular stage, right? List at the rate and give the stage name, okay? Right. So now it is automatically showing me saying that the file is available on a customer info.csv. Okay. So what, let me see if I can able to control this file. This file is available on my S3, right? So let me go back. So you see here, it is available over here, right? So let me refresh and show again, the file is available here. Okay. You see the file is Okay, let me go back to this. Yeah, you see here the file is already available for me now. Okay, so now let's check if I can able to control this file from directly from my Snowflake because I have integrated it. That's what we said, right? So we have able to integrate. So instead of you logging every time into an AWS and push it manually or other way, so you can, as you are integrated with all the required roles and policies, you if you do something over here, that action should replicate here. Okay, so let's move on and see if I can able to remove this file directly. Okay, remove and from this stage. 
okay slash if i mention slash and if i run this own command all this all the files available in this will get removed okay if you want to remove only a specific file always go over here just pick up the file name give add for here and then remove it okay let's see it is removed for us okay it says that yeah this is removed let's go back to our aws and identify check whether it is really removed from this location cool if you see here it's removed no objects are available for me okay so this bucket is totally empty right now okay so that means yeah where our integration is working we could able to control it from our snowflake into uh, our snowflake with aws and we can take any kind of actions directly from here instead of logging into aws right so what scenario it will help if you think any third party is trying to push a files here into this location and you got a business requirement you have to make sure the data is available here in a snowflake right so you can build this kind of integrations to get the data accessed from a snowflake itself after creating an integration and now we will understand how can we access this data and load it into a table okay so let me upload this file again back okay adding your files I'm going to add this uploaded okay cool it's uploaded for me yeah it's uploaded I uploaded back so now to load a data right so let's have a table created for us and I'm creating some temporary table with some structure of that file okay so let me create a table okay i'm creating a temporary table here there is a concept called as a type of tables in a snowflake so we have permanent tables temporary tables and transient tables this temporary tables are session specific tables as soon as i kill this session okay this table will be wiped off from my database okay so this is only be used for a temporary purpose so i have created it so after this demo i don't require this table to be available okay so now we have created a table so let's do select if there is any data from the table select start from this table limit 10 okay so I'm going to access if there is any data in this so there is a zero records in this table so now what we will do is we will try to load it from an external using external stage accessing the file which is available on AWS S3 okay so the command you have to use for this is copy into okay give your table name okay from where you want to load this data from the stage right so what stay what is the external stage we have created and this is the external stage and file so i'm going to use the same file here okay and i have mentioned the file and if i want to use by default the stages has been as i said by default the stages has been mapped with the csv um, as a file format but if you want to mention like you are dealing with json data or if you are dealing with an avro data so you can explicitly mention like this so file underscore format format is equals to and format name and what is the format we have created here so go back demo underscore format is the name so give that name here okay you have given the name now so what we will do is we will try to load this first and i will show you a few other you know functionalities existing with the copy into okay so it said that the data it's loaded there are five records got passed five records got loaded error limit was set as a one but no errors has been happened so as no errors has been seen everything is popped up the error information has been popped up as a null okay let's see if there is a data loaded here okay yeah when i was seen at the first time there was no data now i directly can able to access the data from a, the aws and i can load the data into tables good now in case a scenario one right so now in case you got a requirement saying that there are 100 files available okay and uh, you have to load all the 100 files so how can you load all the 100 files just remove this read all the files okay so let me write this again okay you can read you can read all the files available in your stage right now okay you got a you got a requirement saying that 
okay there are 100 files in case of if there are any file is pain having any issue what you can do is you can skip that file and continue the loading process right on that case scenario you can go with the functionality on error is equals to skip file okay so you can have like this okay so what it does is in case of any error any problem with the one of the file it skips that file okay and then it you able to load all the rest of the data okay or if you get a requirement saying that okay this this particular feature right this particular functionality skips the whole file whole file okay so if you got a requirement saying that i don't want to skip the whole file just skip the records which are bad to me to load it into this table right so all you can do is you can write it as a continue okay what this option will give you in a flexibility is it skips only the bad records and load rest of the records okay so that means there are 100 records in a file and there are two bad records so what you can do is this option skips only the two bad records and rest of the 98 records will get loaded into your tables okay or in case the general one right so any issue happened any bad record appeared all you need to do is you have to kill you have to stop your process okay so all there is about okay so this about option what it does is it you can able to kill your process as soon as the first rejection record is seen while it is loading the data okay so and one more thing scenario 2 okay scenario 2 right so what happens now if i try to load this data again okay let's try to understand if i try to load the data again the same data so I'm going to pick this file name. Okay, I already loaded this data and we are able to see the data over here. Right, if I try to load the same data into a table, for me, this command shows an, not an error, it shows an information saying that it's processed with a zero records. Okay. Okay, it says that the copy command is executed with zero files processed. This file is still existing. Let's find out this file is existing or not. Okay, list. I'm checking whether the file is still existing in the stage or not. Okay, the file is still existing. But while I, when, when I was trying to load the data again from the same file, it shows that I have able to, I'm able to process only zero records from this file. The reason is, the copy into command is a one of the feature in a snowflake it it have a memory it makes sure that whatever the files it has loaded right that all the file information will kept in its memory and it able to understand that next time if you try to load the same file it understand you're trying to load a duplicate data and it will stop you saying that without no notifications okay it stop you saying that okay uh, you executed me but i processed only zero records because this file has been already loaded okay so copy into command will maintain a history for a certain time and within that time period if you load the similar file okay it able to understand you're trying to load the load uh, duplicate data and it automatically it automatically process zero records okay or if if you have a requirement saying that yes i want to load the same file again that's my business requirement then what you can do is you can forcefully write the data okay what this force will do is you don't look at your memory i'm stopping you to look at look back at your memory i ignore this kind of checks okay whatever the option i have given to you just load it okay you are forcing that particular command to load the data okay so if i load the data again now Okay, syntax where comma what happened? Okay, this is gone. So I'm going to create run it again. Okay, I'm making sure forcefully. So we said that again it had loaded the data. Now check how many records got loaded for us, right? So what I'm going to do is select this. First, initially when we executed only five records got loaded. Now I'll just run this count check on this particular table and see how many records are there. Now you see there are totally 10 records that means i have loaded a five records again okay this is one scenario you, you can able to you know understand 
that is keeping in memory and if you want to apply force you can apply force and reload the data okay but this generates a duplicate data we have to be cautious okay and another scenario right scenario three right in case you have a requirement saying that on a successful completion of my load okay i have to remove the file okay in that sense what you can do is there is an option called purging concept okay these are all inbuilt functionalities inside a you know there's no uh, copy into command you all you need is you need to select this while you are running okay purge is equals to true so what this purge is equals to true does as soon as you successfully load the data into your table okay it understands saying that on successful completion i have to remove that file okay i have to remove that file from the stage so automatically if you remove the file from stage that gets removed from your you know aws right so let's see first the file is available for me okay file is still available so now what i am doing is i'm force loading it because it's couple of times already loaded the same file and i'm purging the file okay so running this command okay let's see it is yeah it's loaded again a five records okay totally my count should be now 15 okay totally 15 and now the file should not be available for me right so i'm going here <clears throat> so now there is no file here let's go back to the here and see if the file is still here i'm just refreshing the page so this bucket should not contain any files so let's go here see there is no files available for me it's a no objects right so you can have a similar kind of functionalities in copy into there are multiple other functionalities called as a validate mode okay error if any column mismatches okay there are multiple things like this you can explore it you can i will find this all documentation in a snowflake so it's a good practice to follow in a project okay so moving on to slides so we understand how the s3 works how the IAM roles and then a policies to be created. How can you create a storage integration and get this credential shared between the AWS and a Snowflake? And on top of an integration, you can be able to create the external stage. And using this external stage, you can read the files and you can load the data into your tables and you can take whatever the actions you wanted based on the policy you defined on that particular bucket. Okay. So we covered almost everything and okay this is a batch process whenever you need it you can run your copy command to load the data okay so moving on to the next slide okay so as we are a case case our data vision and uh, we are running it try, trying batches here and snowflake by snowflake with a combination of aws and a sql and a dbt is one of the data build, <laughs> data build tool which is an etl kind of tool also with this combo we are going to start a training course soon and the batch will kick start on december 8th onwards and initial first sessions five sessions are going to open for everyone and it's a free of cost and you can feel the potential of the training and if you want if you like to progress upskill your knowledge on that particular areas you can stick to this program okay and um, i hope this session has provided it some help uh, at least uh, to resolve some issues you having integration with snowflake with aws and definitely i believe this demo will help you to implement the similar kind of scenarios when you are onboarded into your projects okay thank you so much um, if you want to upskill your knowledge on a cloud areas on aws snowflake and other tools okay kindly reach out to this address what mentioned on this screen and our admin team is always available 24 by 7 to help you thank you so much again have a nice day